Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about solid geometry and in particular um, lines and, and planes and their correspondence and uh, different objects you can make from them. Um, this lecture is part of the advanced math uh, course for teenagers presented on unizor.com. Um, which you actually are encouraged to watch from this website because uh, the site contains not only the reference to a lecture itself but also notes which can be used as a textbook. Um, Alright, so we are talking about angles between the planes today. So I have this little plan which I'm going to go through one item uh, after another. Um, mostly this is terminology and very little properties um, I would like just to introduce you to a concept of angles between the planes now obviously I assume that angles between the lines is part of the uh, plane geometry which you know alright so uh, angles between the planes we'll, we will start with well let me just make a little um, reference back you remember when we were talking about uh, angles between the lines, it's actually better if you take a point and have two half lines and then the angle between them. Why? Because if you have complete lines, there are too many angles here, right? So we will do the same thing with planes. Um, so I will start with introduction to a concept of a half plane. Well, let's say the plane is the surface of this uh, board. Now, if you draw a straight line, it divides the plane in two halves. Well, you can call it left and right, or depending on what the orientation, etc. Well, in this case, I will use left and right. So, the left uh, half plane is this part, and I usually include the line itself also in the half plane. Now, let's say my plane is called sigma, so my left half plane would be sigma 1, and the right one will be sigma 2. And this is the line D, which divides these, so what I can say is that sigma 1 union with a sigma 2 is an entire plane sigma, and sigma 1 intersection with sigma 2 is my line D. So this is where they intersect because this line is included in both uh, half planes. And uh, if you unite them together you will get an entire plane. So this is the half plane. This is the concept of a half plane. Now, fine, this is done. But remember angle between the lines is you need two lines, right? Or two half lines. In this case we need two half planes to introduce um, an angle. So let's assume we have the following situation. We have one half plane and another half plane. So this one would be sigma and this would be tau. And what's important is that these two half planes have one common line, which basically was the one um, which we used to form the half plane. Remember, when we hold plane, we just draw a line which separates it in two halves. So this line is, uh, it's called actually the edge of the, hedge pl uh, of the half plane. So these two half planes, sigma and tau, have um, common H. I call it line D. Well, the combination of these two half planes is basically a, an angle between two planes, which is called dihedral. Dihedral angle. Which means from, obviously, to some ancient language translated as the angle between two planes. So this is just the concept. Now, um, what can we say about uh, these two things? 
that the combination of two half planes with a common edge is um, a dihedral angle and you can actually use the symbolic <coughs> like um, something like you remember when you were talking about angles um, let's say you had angles you had point B A C the uh, symbolics would be A B C this is the angle so I'm trying to to be more or less in the same vein and I can say that symbolically this particular angle can be written as sigma d tau well I mean as well as anything else we can obviously put some letters and use the letters but in this case it's more uh, I think symbolically correct because it's half plane edge and another half plane so that's basically the definition of the um, dihedral uh, angle so this is the edge and these are two faces so this is the face and this is the face so two faces and the edge basically form the dihedral angle okay now this is the definition now let's talk about um, the way how we can compare and measure dihedral angles here is what I suggest let's assume that you have another plane which is perpendicular to the edge I think that's the proper way of drawing it. Something like this. No, actually, this is right. Yeah, this is solid. So these are basically. Okay, this is a plain gamma which is perpendicular to the edge at this point and obviously um, actually this is also solid and um, is that the right? yeah I think this is right well so the plane gamma is perpendicular to the edge D at point let's call it A and obviously it intersects both Sigma and Tau let's call this line S and this line T now the angle which is formed by lines S and T of the plane of the intersection of the plane gamma perpendicular to H and corresponding faces of the dihedral angle also form some kind of an angle but in this case it's a plane angle because these are two lines they are intersecting at point A so obviously they belong to the plane gamma and they form certain angle and this angle is called a linear angle of the dihedral angle given before now what's interesting is that since uh, plane gamma is perpendicular to HD HD would be perpendicular to any line on the plane gamma which um, passes through the point of intersection A which means D is perpendicular to S and D is perpendicular to T 
So this is the perpendicular and this is a perpendicular. So D is perpendicular to both of them. Now, what if we will have another plane gamma which is intersecting and perpendicular to the edge? Let's say above it or below it. Well, obviously two planes perpendicular to the same line D must be parallel. We have already learned that. So this new line, uh, new plane gamma, let's say delta, it will be just parallel. Now, will the linear angle formed by plane delta and faces uh, of this uh, dihedral angle, will the angle, linear angle be different? Well, the answer is no. Why? Very simple reason. If you have another plane, let's put it a little bit above this, and it will intersect uh, the same HD a little bit higher, let's say at point B. Now, this plane will uh, intersect face tau along this line and face sigma along this line. And these two will be parallel to these two because this line and this both belong to the plane tau and both are perpendicular to the D, which means they are parallel. Now, these two lines both belong to the plane sigma and both perpendicular to the D, which means they are parallel and two angles with a correspondingly parallel um, sides are congruent. So, it will be exactly the same angle, which means that given the dihedral angle, you completely determine the value of the corresponding linear angle, because its value doesn't really depend on where exactly you put this plane gamma perpendicular to D. Now, again, if you have already given to you dihedral angle, then the linear corresponding linear angle is completely defined. It's one and only. Now, how about in reverse? For instance, you have a linear angle. Does it define um, the dihedral? Well, let's put it this way. If you have a linear angle, you can always draw a plane through these two lines, S and T, which is gamma. You can always put a perpendicular, one and only gamma, and one and only perpendicular to both S and T, or perpendicular to the entire plane, gamma actually, at point of intersection of these two lines. So D is uniquely defined. And, um, and then you have a you have a line D and line T, and these two lines intersecting, obviously, perpendicular to each other, they define the plane tau, and S and D define the plane gamma. So, again, if you have a linear angle before defined by S and T, you can completely rebuild back um, the dihedral angle. So, they both uniquely define each other. Dihedral angle has one and only linear angle, and linear angle has one and only dihedral angle, and both can be effectively constructed from one or another. Now, what does it mean, actually? Well, it means that equality, or congruence, if you wish, between dihedral angles can be completely reduced to the e equality or congruence between the corresponding linear angles. and the other way around. Congruence uh, or, or equality between linear angles corresponds to the um, dihedral angles, linear uh, um, congress or, uh, congruence or equality, which means we can actually measure um, the dihedral angle in terms of corresponding linear angles. For instance, we can say that a particular dihedral angle is acute. What does it mean? Well, it means that the corresponding linear angle is acute. Or that the uh, two uh, half planes are perpendicular to each other. Well, it means actually that the corresponding linear angles are perpendicular to each other.
or the angle is obtuse. So basically, I would like to I would like to consider that linear angles are a complete equivalent, basically, um, of the dihedral angles. To learn something about dihedral angles, it's sufficient actually to do it for corresponding linear angles, and then the story would be completed. Okay, what else? Um, so I talked about measure. Okay, one more thing. Let's talk about measurement between two lines, two cap lines actually, two rays. Let's say you have two rays, S and T. How many angles do they form? Well, four. <laughs> well, this is one angle. Now, this is another angle. And then each angle can be bidirectional. There is a positive and there is a negative direction So of the angle measurement. You remember, counterclockwise would be positive direction uh, and, 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 and clockwise would be negative direction. Well, it's kind of complex. And for dihedral angles, I mean, obviously we can use exactly the same thing, considering the directions and, uh, and both angles from T to S or from S to T. Um, but uh, traditionally, we will just simplify this issue. We will always consider angle between two half planes as being less than 180 degrees. So we will always, so we will not consider this situation. Only acute or perpendicular. Um, no, sorry. Only uh, less than 180 degrees um, angles. And then we will probably disregard the direction of the positive or negative counterclockwise, uh, clockwise, etc. In three dimensions, it, it doesn't really make much sense. So we will always consider these angles as positive, some positive number, and measured in degrees, it would be always less than or equal to 180. Um, and the corresponding measure is the measure between these two rays. Um, which are linear angle of this dihedral angle. Well, that's basically it. That's my introduction to uh, what is dihedral angle, uh, what's linear angle of the di dihedral angle, and their correspondence to each other. Now you know which two uh, planes are, uh, or half planes, are um, forming uh, the acute angle or obtuse angle or perpendicular to each other. It's all measured by the corresponding linear angle. Okay, that's it for today. The properties and uh, some theorems will be um, in the next lecture. Uh, I do encourage you to read the notes to this lecture. Uh, it introduces you to some symbolics because I'm, I, I like to use mathematical symbols. Um, and um, and also what's uh, what's very important um, if you are a registered student on unizor.com then you can actually um, uh, have enrollment in in certain courses uh, certain topics or etc et and then what's very important is you can take exams um, exams are free so basically you can take it as much as you want until you get the perfect score so it's very important because the solving problems and passing some tests and exams is the purpose of the entire course. Now that's it for today and thanks, uh, good luck to you.